One of the most influential contributions to the innovation literature in recent years is the concept of disruptive innovation. One issue that has received less attention is the importance of indirect network externalities in the diffusion of disruptive innovation. An indirect network externality exists when the value of an innovation depends on the availability of complementary products. For example, the value of a video game console depends on the number of video games that can be played on that console. Similarly, the value of an e-reader depends on the number of e-book titles that can be read on that e-reader. In fact, this category dramatically illustrates the importance of complementary products in driving the enroachment speed of disruptive innovations with indirect network externalities. In the U.S., e-book editions of bestsellers and popular books have been widely available since the introduction of the Kindle in 2007. In contrast, in the years after the Kindle launch, Japanese language ebooks continued to fall primarily in selected special interest categories such as manga, reference books, or short novels written specifically for cell phones. What has hindered the diffusion of ebooks in Japan beyond these specialized categories? To answer this question, we interviewed 20 key figures in the book industry in Japan and the U.S. Our findings suggest organizational, technological, and environmental factors have influenced the supply of Japanese e-books and, by extension, the enroachment speed of e-readers in Japan. One important organizational factor involved industry beliefs about the business model needed to make e-readers succeed. Amazon's market power and resources drove the success of the Kindle e-reader in the U.S. In contrast, because no single Japanese firm has Amazon-type power in the Japanese book market, executives questioned the potential market for e-books in Japan. A related factor involved the complex web of interrelationships among publishers, book wholesalers, and book retailers in Japan. A third organizational factor involved the pricing of ebooks. In the US, Amazon promoted e readers by selling ebooks at significant discounts. In contrast, under Japanese law, retailers could not discount the prices set by publishers for paper books. While this system did not extend to ebooks, industry players worried that discounted ebook prices would increase the cannibalization of paper books by ebooks. Together, these organizational factors led many industry players to prefer and wait for an industry consensus to emerge about ebooks. Technological factors also delayed the diffusion of ebooks in Japan because consumers were confronted with incompatible ebook formats. This incompatibility complicated the e reader purchase decision for many consumers. One important example of environmental factors involves copyright law. In the U.S., publishers typically acquire paper and digital rights in a single contract. In Japan, copyrights are usually retained by authors who worry about digital piracy and prefer to negotiate book agreements in face-to-face -face meetings. Another important environmental factor involves industry perceptions of customer needs. Relative to U.S. consumers, Japanese consumers were perceived to place less value on e-readers, in part because pocket-sized editions of Japanese paper books were available for less than $10. In addition, the Kindle's U.S. success was attributed in part to the poor quality of paper books and a resulting lack of emotional attachment to those books among U.S. consumers. In summary, the supply of complementary products in this case ebooks, is influenced by organizational, technological, and environmental factors. Our findings have important implications for firms and policymakers who want to manage the enroachment speed of disruptive innovations that depend on complementary products.